All right, chapter 11 of Jarrett, part 2 video over the vocabulary terms. Uh, of course, chapter 11 deals with the Great Depression and the New Deal. This will be our second one, uh, part 2. Uh, so go, let's go ahead and get started with this. All right, we're going to start on uh, number 18. Uh, we finished with the first 17 in the first video. And so let us begin. We have number 18. Uh, we're looking at relief, recovery, and reform. Uh, these are referred to as the three R's. Relief, recovery, reform. Uh, and this was the center of... Oh, God. All right. I am back. So relief, recovery, reform referred to as the three R's. Uh, and this is all part of FDR, FDR's efforts. Okay, FDR's efforts, part of his New Deal, his domestic agenda. Uh, and it was centered around providing the three R's. Okay, so all of his efforts. Okay, let's make sure we highlight this. All of FDR's uh, efforts were surrounded, or surrounded, were centered around the providing of the three R's. Now, this is extremely important. Let's erase that so we all understand it. The three R's was at the center of FDR's domestic agenda, okay? Relief, recovery, and reform. And we'll go over each and every one of those in greater depth and detail later on. All right, number 19, the banking crisis. Uh, people fearing the banks were unsound, you got to keep in mind, uh, as we discussed in the last video, thanks to buying on margin, uh, people borrowed money from banks, a lot of money from a lot of different banks all over the country to invest in the stock market. And when the people could not pay back their loans, the banks were short of cash. And so, therefore, uh, people were afraid that some of these banks would be unsound. Okay? And they attempted to remove their money from the banks. They attempted to remove their money from the banks. You go up, you know, you go to the teller, and I have $1,000 in the bank. I want all my money. I want all $1,000, or I want all 5000 or $300, whatever the amount was. Uh, and so this created a run on the banks. People were afraid that the banks would be unsound because of all the problems that they had due to the stock market collapsing. So people wanted to remove their money from the banks, and this created a shortage of cash that was in circulation. Now, for those banks who didn't have the cash, for those banks who had loaned out more money than they really could afford to and didn't get the money back because, again, the people didn't have any money to pay back the banks for their uh, loans, uh, those banks would have to close. And the people who had money in those banks were just left with nothing. Number 20, priming the pump. This is the term used to describe, used to describe Government spending of taxpayer money, government spending taxpayer money to create jobs. Okay, let's walk through that again. Priming the pump is a term that is used uh, and refers to the government spending taxpayer money. And again, keep in mind, all money the government has is through taxation. And the government has no money in and of itself. It must raise money through taxation. So the government was spending the taxpayer dollars to create jobs, which was hoped, okay, was hoped, would provide an economic boost. Uh, Priming the pump sort of refers to uh, the old uh, handle, water handle uh, pumps. And sometimes you see them in the old movies, the movies about the Old West. You have a, a little pump handle in your kitchen or outside, and uh, you, you start pumping it up and down a few times. That sort of primes it, and the next thing you know, water starts flowing out. That, that's kind of the concept here. And so uh, the idea of priming the pump was hopefully going to be an economic boost because it would then create jobs. All right. The National Recovery Administration, and this was in 1933, and this, of course, is uh, probably a few weeks or months or so after Roosevelt is in office. Keep in mind, he was elected in 1932, was sworn in early, I think, uh, March of 33, and so within the next few months or so, there are a number of pieces of legislation that came across his desk that he signed into law, and we're going to look at several of them, and this is the first one. And so the National Recovery Administration asked businesses to voluntarily follow codes which set standard prices, production limits, and minimum wages. And so the government is asking 
businesses to voluntarily set standard prices, production limits, minimum wages. So, government is asking the people, the business owners, to set standard prices so everybody will sell the same good at the same price. They would then ask the, uh, the businesses to limit production to keep surplus down, to keep the, the supply down, which should keep prices higher, and then to set minimum wages. All this was designed to create an environment which would lead to the creation of jobs. Our last one on this page, the Agricultural Adjustment Act, known as the AAA, and all of the laws, well, most of the laws passed by the Roosevelt administration are known as the alphabet agencies, the NRA, the AAA, the CWA, the TVA, CCC. There's a number of them we're going to go into, and they often are only referred to by the uh, letters of each word, in this case the AAA, Agricultural Adjustment Act. Uh, in the first AAA, the government paid farmers to plant less which they hoped would increase prices. Again, supply and demand. If there's less of a supply, prices tend to go up, you know, all things being evil, uh, equal. Uh, unfortunately for the Roosevelt administration, it was ruled to be unconstitutional. Okay? So the government paid farmers to plant less, which would increase prices. The law was challenged in the courts, and the Supreme Court ruled that the AAA, the first AAA, was unconstitutional, okay? So the first AAA is unconstitutional. Now we go to the second AAA, the second Agriculture Adjustment Act. It succeeded in raising farm prices, okay? It was successful. How did it do so? Well, it it, the government, bought farm surpluses. The government, using taxpayer dollars, would go to farmers and buy their surpluses. What they could not sell, the government purchased. And then the idea was to store those goods, wheat, cotton, whatever the case may be, until prices went up. Now, again, this is... Uh, it is, okay? It is what it is. Uh, in some ways it is brilliant, in some ways it's just absolutely stupid. Uh, it is stupid for the government to be spending that money in that way, particularly in an economic slowdown. We're in the middle of the Great Depression. And there's no money. The money's all gone, okay? Uh, and how that is, we'll talk about later on. I mean, how does, you know, you just don't lose money. But we'll talk about how that occurs in, in, in a little bit or a little bit later on. But there is no money. No one really has any cash, and so the government is taxing, raising taxes in some cases, and now the government is buying farm surpluses. The government is taking the money from people, buying surpluses because the farmers have overproduced. No one is buying their goods, or not as many people are buying as much of their goods as before. And so the government is buying them and storing those goods until the prices go up. So in a sense, it is a good thing because it's helping farmers. In another sense, it's kind of a waste of taxpayer dollars, and the money could be spent other ways, could be spent better. Okay, let us go to our next page. Here we are looking at a, a few more of the, uh, here we are, I'm sorry, I was kicked off there for a moment. We're looking at the, a few more of the uh, alphabet agencies of the Roosevelt, Roosevelt administration, the FDR administration, uh, number 23 is the CCC, the, oops, sorry, let me get that out of the way. There we go, sorry. The Civilian Conservation Corps, okay, 1933. Again, this took place shortly after Roosevelt is inaugurated. Uh, this is arguably one of the, if not the most successful program of the FDR administration. And what it did was give jobs to young men, particularly from back east, New York, Philadelphia, Boston, those uh, urban areas. Uh, they were transported out west, west of the Mississippi, and they would plant trees, clean up forests. They did other things, of course, um, uh, build roads and that kind of stuff. Uh, the idea was to take these young men from back east, send them out west. They would live in government housing. They received free food. 
and a part of their salary, half of it, was sent home to their parents. Now, it's assumed uh, that very, very few of them were married. We're looking at about 18 to 25 or so year olds. Uh, they got paid $30 a month, half of which would go home to their parents. They would keep the other half. So the CCC gave jobs to young men, and primarily they planted trees and cleared up forests. Now, again, they did some other things, uh, made roads, uh, cut down trees, those kinds of things. Uh, again, it was a relatively successful program. Uh, millions of young men took advantage of this program. And again, this program, like so many of the FDR New Deal programs, had a number of flaws. The first one is, well, simply put, it didn't create long-term good-paying jobs. This is a short-term, kind of mm -mm, not very good paying job. I mean, 30 bucks a month, even in the 1930s, is not a lot. It's more than what they were making. Don't get me wrong. It, it, something's better than nothing. But they really weren't taught skills. What you need in this type of economic slowdown is you need good-paying jobs. You need skills. And the individuals we're talking about were unskilled. And so instead of providing them with some training, we essentially moved them out west. Of course, what do we have to do? Well, okay, let's, let's clean this up a little bit. So we can go back and take a quick look at this. So what do we do? Well, we, we gave them housing. So we had to build places for them to live. They received free food. So the housing, the food was paid for by the government. Now, again, these people, these young men, 18 to 25, uh, and there were millions of them who participated in this. I believe the average stay in the CCC was about six months. So after that six-month period of time, okay, you, you got a place to stay out west. You got some exercise. You got outside, got some sun, got a little bit of a tan, yay. Uh, and then you ate probably pretty well. But six months is only $180. A year is only $360. I mean, that's not really going to help you very long term. And so the problem with a number of these alphabet agencies, like the CCC, is that they didn't really create an environment that would produce long-term, good-paying jobs. Okay, let's move on. Number 24, Federal Emergency Relief Act, again, also in 33. Uh, this funded state and local governments to provide emergency relief and enabled millions of people to be hired on make-work projects. Now, essentially what this means is the government would hire people to go out and do things like collect, uh, pick up garbage on the side of the street, these make-work projects. Uh, to give you an idea, something you're familiar with, uh, teachers absent, leaves behind a couple of pages of work for you to do from the book, which I do myself. That is an example of make work. In this case, a make work project is you're creating something for them to do to keep them busy and provide them a little bit of a benefit. In, in, in case of me leaving work for you, it keeps you busy so you don't you know, harass and you know, kill the substitute teacher. And I get a couple grades from it for that day. That's a make work project. And so the, let me erase this so we can see this, there we go. So the Federal Emergency Relief Act created these make work projects. Millions of people participated and the government was providing emergency relief, again, relief recovery reform. Providing relief, immediate cash. The CCC, Civilian Conservation Corps, gave people money, those who were hired, money quickly. The Federal Emergency Relief Act provided relief, money. People were being given money uh, for relatively little work. I'm not sure it was hard work. I mean, some of this work I'm sure was out in the hot sun, collecting trash on the side of the road, any, any number of things like that. But again, 
uh, relief, recovery, reform, relief, providing uh, direct, quick monetary assistance. Okay, let us go to number 25, the Public Works Administration, the PWA, 1933 as well. Uh, created, this has got to be a typo. I'm not sure what that refers to. Created jobs by building public projects such as schools, roads, courts, uh, that would be courthouses, uh, and post offices and bridges. So again, we're looking at work that needs to be done. You know, did we need schools and roads and uh, courthouses and post offices and bridges being built? Yeah, we did. Uh, did the people who worked on these projects really gain skills for long term? A few of them may have, but a lot of them did not. It was just make work. Okay, so as a result of the PWA, we had a large number of schools built across the, the country. Roads connecting urban and rural areas. Courthouses were built. A lot of them still in usage today. Post offices, same thing. A lot of them still in work today. Same thing with the bridges. Was it something that needed to be done? Yes. Is it something the government should be doing? Probably. Was it a great idea to do it at this time with the economic slowdown that we had? Probably not. Did it create jobs? Yes, indeed. Again, what are we looking at here? We're looking at jobs being needed. We needed jobs. And the relief portion of relief recovery reforms a lot of it had to do with jobs being created right now. Let's go to number 26. The Works Progress Administration, 1935, created jobs. Again, government is creating jobs, paying by hiring artists, writers, and musicians. And these artists, writers, and musicians would paint murals, produce plays, and create other forms of artwork, by the way, which many, many of which are still around to this day. Many murals that were painted were painted in the courthouses. Many of them were painted in schools. Many of those murals, many of those murals that were painted by the artists who were hired by the government as a result of the Works Progress Administration, many of them who painted those murals would go into post offices. You can still see them. Writers wrote books extolling, expressing the virtue of hard work. Uh, musicians would write music, uh, put together uh, musicals, uh, write songs that would talk about uh, how great the WPA is or uh, how great America is. Again, on and on and on. Artwork is being created because jobs are being created. Artists, writers, musicians are being hired by the federal government. Number 27, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. One result of the run on the banks, which we talked about in the previous slide, people beginning to pull their money out of the banks because they were afraid that the bank would not have enough money, would not be able, would not have enough money so they can get all their money out. So there was a run on the bank, and if a bank ran out of cash, it closed. One result of that was the FDIC. This ensured bank deposits up to a certain dollar amount. I believe that dollar amount today is, oh my gosh, uh, a quarter of a million dollars or more. I think at one time it started about 60000 and it's gone up. It, it may be more than that. I, I remember not too long ago I was having a conversation with someone, and they said I mean, it was up to a quarter of a million dollars. Now, that may be wrong, but uh, you get the idea. So if you have $250,000 in the bank, and the bank owner steals everybody's money, the government will reimburse you if your bank is FDIC, and they all pretty much have to be, if your bank is FDIC and the deposits are insured, then the government will reimburse you your money, again, up to a certain dollar amount, which I believe is $250,000. So 
people would not lose their savings in case of a bank failure. All right. We're going to go ahead and end it at this one. We'll have a third one. The uh, Jarrett chapter 11. And this is part two. It is over. We will finish the vocabulary terms. I believe we have another, oh, 15 or 16 terms, another three slides or something like that, three or four slides. We'll finish it up in part three, but this was Jarrett chapter 11, part two. We're going to go ahead and finish it. We're a little over 20 minutes, and again, I want to keep these around 20 minutes as, as much as possible. So we'll finish it this time, uh, and we'll have a, a third one uh, soon.